Hello, Brian Knowlton back with another super cool slide drill tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to change an indoor blower motor. You can, this will be the same whether it's a gas furnace or, or an all electric unit like this one is here. The only tools we will need are, in, in my application, we have a uh, socket, but you may use a 5 16 or quarter, whatever. The only thing that's required to pull this motor is you must remove the two bolts, or there will be two screws, usually right up in the front. Remove those and pull the unit straight out. Um, start off by disconnecting all the power to the system. Make sure all the, I just turn off every two pole breaker in the panel. That way you know you're good. Once that is done, disconnect your wires to your motor. Mark down where they were exactly, or take a picture if you can with your, with your smartphone. Pull the wires out. I've removed the bolts in the front, it just slides straight towards you. Once you have it out, it's really much easier if you have the correct tools. The correct tools for this is called a hub puller. The way this works is this bolts on right to the front. You have to unscrew your shaft all the way to allow it to go over this. Do not put a crescent or any wrenches or anything on this motor shaft. If you do, you'll never get it off. We'll loosen our set screw, clamp your puller on there. I'll be back in a second when I have that done. Okay, I've got my screw all the way backed out. I've got my set screws on the side, completely loose. Put it on your motor. Completely tighten up the side screws. Once those are good and tight, use, of course, a, a crescent wrench on them. You go clockwise on this to completely remove the blower motor. Okay, one thing I forgot, this is all tight. On the back side where the motor is, we have to loosen our screws, bolts, nuts, whatever we have on this side. Um, loosen those, completely remove those. Disconnect the leads to your capacitor. A lot of times it's a, it's a good idea to short out your capacitor. Make sure you don't get a little jolt. Always replace your capacitor when you're putting in a new motor. Don't take any chances. Just uh, might as well do it while you're in there. Um, I'll get all these removed and I'll be right back. So I've got the motor completely loose. The blower wheel is still attached. All we do, we tighten this up clockwise, our, our puller, until the uh, motor comes off. Pretty simple. You may want to uh, support the motor on the other side. Don't manhandle it. Uh, this thing is kind of uh, sensitive, so just be careful there. Okay, I've completely tightened up my, my hub puller. Support the motor during the entire process. The motor's now loose. I pull it out. Now I'll remove the belly band and I will get the, uh, the same horsepower. It's also important to get the same amp draw. Um, I want to pay attention to the RPM, the amp draw, the horsepower. Get them all, you know, you really need to be within about 10% maximum. But I try to always match them up exactly. Okay, to remove the belly band, we remove the screw here, the bolt here, I mean. Um, pay attention to where the old motor was in relationship to the to the band. If we'll notice, we're just off center a little bit. Once we remove this band, we can get all the, the specs on this motor and replace it. So I, I remove the bolt, put the new motor back in. Now, it's important that we note the rotation. This motor is what's considered a reversible motor. It can spin either way. So once this is in, there will be an arrow usually marked on your on your housing somewhere. If there's not an arrow, the the rotation of the fan is always from the. If you'll notice the smaller dimension here, and as it gets wider here, the rotation will always be in that same direction. So if you install this motor, turn it on. If you note that the blower wheel is moving the opposite way, unplug these two wires, and all you do is. You want to plug them this way. They're, they're, they're idiot proof. 
They can only go back together one way. So I've got a, an orange and brown here. When I disconnect those, the only other wire that will connect to this terminal is the purple. So by doing that, I've just reversed the rotation of this motor. So once the new motor is in, stick it back in. The first thing we're going to do is on the back side, the very first thing is, is to put this in, in place, bolt it where it goes, um, and once we have it bolted in place, we'll put the, the wheel back on. And uh, when you go to set your set screw, once the wheel's back in place, you go to set your set screw, make sure that your blower housing um, assembly is centered. Okay, I'm going to pretend I put a new motor in here. I've got my new motor. It's all bolted back into the belly band where it goes. When I'm stabbing this, I put my blower wheel on as I'm doing it. Once I've got it in place there, I put my three screws or bolts back in place. Once that's done, Take your set screw, center your blower wheel, center it directly in the middle of the housing. Once it's good and centered and it's right where you want it, put your, your set screw back in, tighten everything up, and then we're ready to slide it back in. Okay, now to slide this back in, pay close attention to your rails. There's usually keepers on the side. You lift it up. Slide it in, put your two bolts or set screws back in place, and then when wiring it back up, just wire your new motor back where your old um, terminals were. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For more tutorials, please log on to www.supercoolslideroll.com. But please, please stay tuned while I introduce the Super Cool Slide Rule. It is the coolest tool in the HVAC industry. Thank you. I'd like to take a minute to introduce you to the coolest tool in the HVAC industry. Historically, technicians have carried four or five different slide rules. You have one for R22, one for R410A, one for metal duct sizing, one for flexible duct sizing, and yet others for diagnostics or troubleshooting. Thankfully, those days are gone. This one tool will allow you to charge a system with R22 or R410A and either the superheat or subcooling method the back cover contains required formulas, it has capacitors rules and practices, a wet bulb conversion chart, how to perform computations on series or parallel circuits, an electric heat strip guide, a complete system troubleshooting diagnostic chart, and how to troubleshoot compressors in TXV. Inside is packed with even more information. It performs sizing of both metal and flexible duct, it has the only direct reading conversion from smooth metal to insulation line metal we've ever seen. The majority of technicians have never been taught that if the insulation is on the inside of the ductwork, you cannot size it with a regular duct calculator. It has step-by-step -step directions for determining airflow through a gas furnace, electric furnace, or an air conditioning unit. It has pressure drop multipliers for ductwork, as well as recommended velocities. And finally, the scanning of this QR code gives instant access to over 100 tutorials to assist the technician with every test and repair imaginable. You owe it to yourself, as well as your customers, to own this tool. It's less than $20, including shipping. The Supercool will save you countless hours of frustration when troubleshooting units. Log on to our website and get one today, and I promise you will be a better technician tomorrow. And remember, every technician is only as good as their tools. Thanks for watching.